14, clear for visual event approach, runway 24, contact the tower at 6 DME at 3000. Alpha Bravo from 207. 13 miles. Fox 1, Fox 1. Oh, Jesus. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are here again with another episode of ACES 22, second edition between 51st and PTF. Sorry for letting you wait. Uh, we just uh, had a little bit of delay in, in setting up things. Um, I was not supposed to stream this um, match tonight, so I'm a little bit late. Um, I got late um, request to do so, so sorry to let you wait. Uh, in the meanwhile, the teams are also logged on the server. Um, and for the ones who uh, don't know me, I'm 81Banana, your host tonight, uh, the lo lonely host. Um, uh, and I have the privilege to uh, present you the match between 51st and PTF. Uh, and we are in the rainy weather in Caucasus, um, moving to 
the split screen for you guys so you can see uh, both air fields. So we have one side, 51st, with the flankers. Uh, let's take a look. So here is a 636 tonight. Here we have the ATO number four. Um, so we have six pilots, six airframes, and six air to air. So for the ones who are new to um, ACES, uh, there are different tasks or different scenarios that people need, need to fulfill or to fly. And each scenario is different. With the ATO4, we have actually a um, air to air situation. So six air to air aircrafts versus six air to air aircraft. Uh, the loadouts are unlimited. It means that uh, let me get to the rules um, so I don't explain you bullshit. So for the ATO, we have this situation. So for the flankers, so it means Sukhoi 33, Sukhoi 27, J11, and MiG-29S, we have unlimited loadout of the choice, except the banned weapons. So no nukes, no M9X. And... For the NATO aircrafts, also the same. So they're free to choose whatever they want to take with and uh, the number of the missiles that uh, they're going to have with them. So it's a pure air-to-air. -air. We have no ground targets uh, to hit here because the one who are familiar with that know that we have also um, some scenarios where we have the uh, air to ground mission, let's say task within the scenario. So some uh, aircrafts need to go on the ground targets and some others are responsible for the um, air to air and, the, and covering those. So one more thing, the blue team is gonna defend, uh, sorry, they're gonna attack, and the red team is gonna defend when there are air to ground targets. In this scenario, as I said, because we have no ground targets, it's gonna be pure air to air, so uh, there is only air to air missiles, which makes sense, no bombs, that's sure. And then, oh, okay, um, I see that. Um, there is a need to restart the mission, um, so it's unfortunate. But no, ma no matter, we just take the time to just explain a little bit around um, about what is the ATO-4 and um, what happens here when there are no air-to-ground targets and how the pointing system is. Okay, so... The thing is, in the ACES tournament, only the blue team can collect points. Means that you have two rounds, you have two ATOs, ATO of choice of every team is gonna be flown only one time, and then the blue team is gonna collect points by hitting the targets, by hitting the bandits, and by doing formation takeoff, uh, and by landing at the home airfield the red guys they have only the task to just decline the blue side to collect points so they want to spit in their soup in the other words this in the other round then they change side they change the colors and the ones who are flying blue going into red and doing the same thing um, to the new blue guy. So this is how it's uh, working. I'm not sure if the server is going to get restarted. I had a message saying that F5 is open. So uh, for the ones who know that, um, if you are in the external view and push the F5 button, as I explained also in the other 
uh, mission and uh, matches, you can see the closest aircraft to you within the five nautical miles, and this can be used to just cheat. This way, I think um, we need to just uh, save the mission again with those settings and run it again. So this way, uh, we're going to have a little interrupt. If you want to get something to drink, do it now. We have a couple of minutes till the teams rejoin the server after uh, the restart, and then we continue from there. So while we're doing this, while we're waiting for the teams, um, I can um, do a short introduction of our sponsors of ACES 22 second episode, uh, which are the managed services, uh, Fox3 and TACView. Um, I will try to just get TACView running for tonight. And I think um, it is pretty much working. So let me see if I can show you a little bit of that when the server is running, so you get more familiar with uh, the um, with the attack view and what it is. So yes, uh, I have the data available, so I can log into the server uh, and uh, use a real-time telemetry and show you how it works. Gonna love it, and um, just because we get to that at a later point, I just focus myself on. Fox3 Managed Services, they're providing virtual cloud servers for DCS enthusiasts. Uh, and if you're thinking of getting a server for your team or um, yourself uh, to just fly or just run your own mission and let other people join and fly with you, um, there are definitely um, some good uh, offers for you, just don't hesitate to go on um, Fox 3 Managed Services um, server. Just search and look up, um, Google it, and then you will easily find it. So these are sponsors of the ASS. Without them, uh, this were not possible. Uh, Fox 3 Managed Services has just provided us with the servers. So um, we are flying on those servers, and TACView is the sponsored um, and therefore you see the logos up there on the right and left corner. Good. Um, server is again up. So let me get into the slots. And show you a little bit more. I think I need to disconnect here. For some reason, it's not working for me to rejoin on one of the. Instances, I'm running two instances of. DCS for better view. Let's see if rejoining help. Hmm. Strange. I can't. It's quite strange. Do the third try. It just worked before we restart the server. It's quite weird. Okay, no worry. We just disconnect one. Um, for whatever reason, that's not working. So we're gonna jump 
to the DCS capture. Here, just one instance. And then later on, we can also get in onto tag view and then do the split screen there. So, okay, let's connect to tag view, see if it, everything's working. Yes, okay, good, perfect. Back to DCS, we go on blue team. The reason that I choose blue team is that the blue team is the one who is collecting points. Means that uh, the formation takeoff is gonna be uh, rewarded with, with points. So it is pretty much um, important to see how these guys are doing. Um, the formation takeoff is defined as t at least two airframes taking off or losing contact with the ground within two, if I'm not wrong, or three seconds time interval. Means that they need to just rotate and take off and lose contact to the uh, from the airbase within the two seconds and it counts to a formation takeoff. Um, so this way, it's important to see if these guys are doing well and then collecting those points or not. We see already one aircraft on the runway. Five others are taxiing. Oh, but I said four are taxiing and uh, Fatin is still there. So you see the nice weather out there, uh, at least daytime. Um, yesterday, uh, the ones who just saw the match um, just noticed that we were having even worse condition. Uh, it was night and it was raining. Um, so. It was not really the weather you want to fly, DCS. Uh, but now we have a little bit better situation here. We have at least daytime, uh, even it is um, raining. We can't do anything. We would need to live with that. Okay, let's take a look at the loadout. As I said, we have the AT-04 in the first round. The blue side is going to fly, uh, flown by uh, PTF. So PTF is uh, flying uh, blue. This ATO or this first round. And um, so they're really free to choose whatever missiles they want to take with themselves. Uh, only thing which is banned is, um, yeah, uh, what is banned. So I think uh, AIM-9X um, is banned, as far as I know, at nukes or air-to-ground, TALs and things like this. So it should be pure air-to-air, -air, uh, but I believe no AIM-9X um, is allowed. So let's take a look at the loadouts or every single aircraft there. So we fly... Uh, we start with the ones who are already on the runway. Okay, we have here two AIM-9s, 10 uh, AIM-120Cs. Look at that. Look at that carriage. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 FOX-3 missiles. My goodness. So this is a good reason for taking Hornet with you. Um, it has a loadout nobody can compete with. And on this side, we have, on, uh, on the right side of the Hornet, we have the JF-17 with four Fox 3 ST-10s and two PL-5. So um, the comparable um, infrared seeking missile to Sidewinder, to the NATO Sidewinder. So we have the second uh, F-18 here. Uh, probably gonna have the same loadout um, and they're gonna take that advantage and take as many missiles that they can with themselves okay F-16 has not loaded yet the reason is um, you know when you just load 
um, the tanks, and then you try to rearm again because you just consume uh, fuel on the runway. Then you need to drop those tanks and then um, take them back, and it uh, takes a long time. So usually the F-16s tend to um, load last minute. Same situation here with the JF-17, and I'm missing the sixth aircraft. Okay, here is coming. Same situation, six Fox 3s. This is the maximum load that F-16 can take with. Um, Nobody is taking, I think, um, Sidewinder, uh, none of the F-16. Uh, it wouldn't make sense. Um, I think we are having, let's have a, have a look here. Uh, the bullseye is, yeah, it's, it's quite, uh, let's say it's not flat, but it's not very high mountain, so it's kind of mixed. Um, Sometimes you just prefer to take um, IR uh, seeker missiles with you when you have um, a little bit of uh, more terrain here just because you get closer to the enemy and then have better chance to just um, those uh, use those um, infrared seekings. But as, as long as you're flying very, very long, probably the, the most of the battle gonna happen around the bullseye, then um, everybody... Um, decides to just take Fox 3 missiles instead of Fox 2s. So let's take a look at the red side, the 51 in Sukumi, and see what is there. Okay, we see here also R-27s, heat seeking, R-27 radar guided, so, and we have also the archers, R-73s. I think this is probably the standard loadout for the other guys so you see the number of missiles um on the flank okay we are also here the uh fuselage tunnel we have also missiles there so we have two four six eight missiles two of them are um heat seeking and in comparison to hornet they are actually under armament but um this is not everything um flanker is capable um they can use their infrared seeking and the um r27 t's very well um has a longer range than sidewinder and um gonna be very dangerous um especially in the bad weather or in terrains so believe everybody is ready So team are lining up. We we'll switch to blue side to see the formation takeoff for the sake of points. So write in the chat what you want to see. Um, do you want to see the tack view or you want to stay with the DCS window? Um, up to you. At some point of time, probably I'm going to share a um, little bit of TACVIEW with you guys. I just introduce TACVIEW also to the audience. Um, ones who are not familiar with, with TACVIEW yet, um, to see what benefits you have um, when you're doing your briefing or debriefings um, on the TACVIEW. Okay, let's go to the chat. Okay, the go, go, go is there. Um, well, they, they just started to roll, but didn't go. Both sides are ready. Okay, now. Brakes are on. We're waiting. Okay, there is 
something in the chat saying standing by something probably happened after the go 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 we have a disconnect let's check we had the disconnect on the red side so break shot disconnected let's see um what is the situation here how many people we have yeah so have five people one one disconnect it's um it's yeah disappointing but happens Connection timeout. Yeah. Well, can happen. Okay. So, um, tell you a little bit of the map. For the ones um, who know, uh, Sukumi is the coast of uh, Black Sea. And uh, we have also Tbilisi here um, in Georgia. So, they're going to fly across... The Caucasus map. So it's a very, very long distance to fly. Um, to be exact, we're going to have around about 100 nautical miles, if I'm not wrong. It's 95 nautical miles something uh, to fly to the bullseye. So the distance between two airfields is around about 190 nautical miles. So it's going to be a long uh, way to fly till the bullseye. Each of the teams need to fly to the bullseye. This is where they engage. They can fly around it, but there is a bubble around the bullseye. Um, once you get into that bubble, I think it is 40 nautical miles in, um, in radius. Um, so once you get into the, uh, sorry, in, in, um, the radius is going to be 20, 20 nautical mile, I think. I'm, uh, I'm not sure what, uh, but it's big enough. It is in, in the big enough. I can, uh, look it up later and tell you once, uh, the teams are flying, um, get to the, um, rule, uh, PDF and see, uh, how big, um, the bubble is, but you can imagine there is a circle. I mean, a 3D circle, half of a bubble. Um, around the bullseye and you can move around in this area but you cannot leave that area once you have entered it till all the bandit aircrafts are down so you need to make sure that you kill all the bandits before you get out of it once you're out of the bubble you can't re-enter if you re-enter you blow up we had a situation in yesterday's match uh, that someone has just quit the bubble after being victorious and um, got all the bandits down and then noticed that he's just flying in the wrong direction, not to the home base to land, but to the bandits or the enemy base to land. And then turned back and entered, re-entered the bubble and blew up, which was um, a shame. But um, you need to be aware that once you have just left the, the bubble, you cannot re-enter. Um, I've I spoke with the organizers, and we are uh, considering that um, probably it's not going to happen for the, this tournament. Uh, but from the next tournament, we try to just make the um, needed changes to the script so that once you're victorious and the uh, battle area is owned, uh, then the script is not uh, acting and it's not uh, blowing you up once you're re-entering the bubble on your way back home, uh, once you're out of the bubble from the wrong side, which makes sense. The whole thing, because there is the bubble and there is the penalty of getting killed uh, when you re-enter the bubble is that you just don't turn your back to your bandits and run away and 
just uh, burn fuel and um, make it a little bit more competitive for sure and uh, also make sure that um, people are staying there and, and fighting against each other instead of, instead of um, flying away um, from the uh, from the bullseye area um, some there are some airplanes who are less consuming they can do that probably and then um, you have no chance to just chase them especially when you have uh, not a powerful engine like them um, and it's not the situation that we want to have and want to see so this way um, the uh, the reason behind the bubble okay we see the brake shot um, come back also loaded out uh, I see four I mean three of them I see the fourth I don't see uh, the um, the radar version of Alamo or our 27s and I see two uh, heat seeking Alamo and uh, the two archers infrared seeking missiles um, just same loadout on the Sukhoi 33 here um, Sukhoi 33 is the carrier landing or the Navy edition of uh, flanker family that's why um, you can fold the wings up to just save space and room on the carrier um, flanker is a very big airplane is a really big bird uh, this way it saves rooms on the carrier so this way you see even the, um, the stabilizer um, the word uh, horizontal stabilizer also f to fold here so he, he probably needs to pass through the other guys standing on uh, the runway uh, on the um, yeah runway and wait so just fold up the wings pass through search the position and once he's there, it's gonna fold them back down. Well done. Okay, so let's get back to the blue side. This is where we want to see the formation takeoff. Uh, I have made sure that I have the skins, so I have one of the skins, F-16, so this way I'm um, sure that um, at least I have the skin installed, but I don't know why I'm not seeing all those aircraft. So I, I see also a reserve here, a uh, seventh airplane, just in case that somebody has um, disconnected, a late disconnect. Uh, prior to go 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 um, so he can replace so break shot writes that they're ready let's ask if both sides are ready okay PTF needs a little bit
Don't wonder if you see new heat blars. Um, I was flying prior to this um, stream and I just reduced the settings um, in order to save a little bit of resources on VR and I didn't make to just set them back um, so you see a little bit more detail so um, the texture is high but uh, you won't see heat blurs and grasses here I apologize for that let's see if I can change anything without restarting the system probably I can do the grass um, the visibility let's do this pull all high makes it a little bit nicer uh, but still no heat blur sorry for that so if you are new to DCS or new to uh, competitive or even thinking of getting into the competitive flying um, you can just get together with a couple of friends uh, build up a team train and just sign up for these kind of tournaments to just collect experiences there are tournaments with different levels um, of skills so uh, they have kind of silver and gold and um, whatever category so you can go into the right category and just uh, try your skills and lock um, against um, uh, similar teams um, who are also new or less skilled uh, so don't hesitate uh, if you like you can also join uh, one of the squads uh, which are flying for years those competitions you can learn from them a lot um, this is all by doing and training and um, it's just fun I can tell you so okay go 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 here we go so there's a change of plan uh, JF-17 is not gonna fly in the first element together with F-18 we're gonna have F-18 and F-16 here so F-18 puts a little bit delay uh, just for F-16 to catch up because these guys want to have the formation takeoff uh, yes uh, I don't know if it is enough I'm not sure okay that was a little bit of miss um, coordination management. I don't know what what uh, I can say that, but um, uh, for me it was not the cleanest formation takeoff or scene. Um, I don't know. Someone needs to just leave the server. Um, otherwise, we have a problem. So two airframes are in the air and three are uh, five are on the ground so we have in total seven airframes so one of them needs to disconnect usually you need to disconnect before the first airframe is gonna um, take off so I don't know how the rules now is gonna If there's a penalty or not um, so here the f-18 decides to just fly solo let's see what's happening next so we have the jf-17 here anaconda okay here we go to f-16 oh i know Oh no, oh no, oh no! Oh God! Not good, not good, not good. So we, we just lost one airframe here. I believe that most of that was because of the JF-17 on the runway 
and this way the other aircrafts needed to just go around not to collide with them so you know f-16 is pretty much um yeah it's pretty much unstable i would say um and once you just start and then you have the nose wheel steering activated and you try to just steer then it's um, such things can can happen very fast this is it's a pity it's indeed a pity okay we're streaming with a little bit of delay uh, guys to let you know um, this is just because um, we just wanted to make sure that nobody is sitting there and, and watching uh, the happening and let the um, teammates know uh, who are flying uh, what is happening and um, give them a real-time tip so um, here I can show you a little bit more let me just go to a different view um, check See if I can get the tag view for you guys. Okay, so here we go. This is Tag View, and this is what I was uh, trying to show you as I was talking about the um, sponsorship. Um, so, what you see here is actually the everything that is happening on the map and you can see here even better than what you see on the map of the dcs itself you see you have this 3d view of the battle area or the map um you can see also different information useful information about the um airframes are flying yeah you can see uh, the call signs, you can see the altitude, you can see the Mach number, um, you can see the radar altitude, the, the G-force uh, that these airplanes are pulling, and you can see also everything in 3D. Um, you see them maneuvering, uh, you see where uh, their flying vector are, um, the angle of attack and everything um, you need. So you, you have a better situational awareness over the field then you're um seeing the um the map on dcs okay here the blue side we have ptf with f16 uh, and f18 here the front lead um following by another f15 uh this is uh rodo who's following then we have the jf17 and falcon in f16 and predator in f16 is falling so they have six pilots here in the air i think that the rules allow 
that once you crash and you have not just take off somebody else can just jump in and take your place i think just because of that that we have um six pilots in the air uh despite of the fact that we just lost one uh during the takeoff but chat can also um Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, so on the red side, we see two, two ships. Uh, sorry, two, three ships. Um, what's wrong with me today? Um, I have here... No, uh, indeed, there are two ships. So we have two flankers um, going a little bit left. And we have here four flankers together which are now spreading, uh, which are going to the right flank. Uh, quite... Hmm. Uh, wait and see. Wait and see what, what um, 51 is going to perform here. Um, on the blue side, it builds kind of two, three ships uh, with one airframe, which is Predator, uh, trying to catch up. Um, so we have a kind of three ship here in the front, a little bit of battle spread distance, uh, followed by the rest. Um, they are heading towards the bullseye and they don't let themselves um, distracted by the fact that there are two different flanks getting around the bullseye from the bandit side. Here we see also separation on the right side. Yeah, I go focus on the right side to let you see better. Um, here we see also the separation between these four aircraft. So they're building two two ships on the right side and the left side we have still the the two ship. Okay, we see here some movements. Uh, the first R27 radar version been fired on the left two ship here. And the second one is falling. So two ERs uh, from that side, two ERs from the other side. So it looks like a plan um, to just fire Two ERs each side to just bring the whole formation of uh, the opponent into a chaos. Okay, so what we see here is also an exchange here, so we have the first uh, 120 from the F-18. F-18 has enough Fox 3, so can spend one on the flanker here, while the third ER is also flying from the left side, so they use their ER to just distract the opponent and get closer to them, bring them into the uh, defensive, I believe.
here Munger is is um, if he's not going to turn away and go back to his friends, gonna have a big trouble here. Um, let's see what this ER is doing. Is he has the enough energy to just reach out? No, it goes into the ground. Very well done from Munger. This one is gonna be a little bit dangerous. This ER is on Roto. Roto is trying to notch it, go into the notch, but I don't think that it's tracking anymore. Yes, the notch is successful. Well done by Roto here. This radar missile is going to nowhere, so probably his Kirtle is going to take it. So do we have any kills that I have missed here? Let me check. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six on the red side, and on the blue side, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So no kills. We didn't miss anything. What I'm really um, a bit worried of is what Monger is doing here. He's pretty much low, but he's very close to the enemy. If, if one of those flankers fly high um, over his head, and then fire from top to down is going to be a um, problem. Good shot from Falcon. Uh, he goes straight away into the defensive, into the split S, and drop uh, countermeasures just in case. Uh, this Amram is not going to have enough juice to just harm, I believe. Even if it is fast, I think. Yeah, he's, uh, he's safe. Well, well done. So we still have no kills. We just see that the situation has changed. Um, the red side is just joined and, and just got together and try to just use the number the, or the, let's say outnumber the opponent uh, by keeping very close to each other. Um, it's hard to do that. Um, there is also a uh, bit risk of getting killed by enemy uh, by friendly fire well done well done monger is doing a perfect job notching missile after missile and using his countermeasure very well here he was very unlucky his amram went for the bandits missile and didn't go for uh, Kali, I believe. So, this way he got killed because he was actually outnumbered by 51st. But he did a very good job by notching two, three missiles after another. So, let's get back to Um, let me go. Back to DCS. And. Just see what is going on here to pick because we have some merges here that uh, probably worth seeing. So let's take. Frosty. And he is pretty much close to the bandit. So I have the F1 view. You can see here the missile going off. He's going down to avoid the missile coming, but it got hit. And we have a kill for the blue side. The situation has changed very, very quickly. So we have here one v2 so let's get the Kali on this side and just see 
how he's doing versus two bandits. In that sense, the blue ones. Dark Star, we got him. He's on Kali. We have a merch here. Guns out. And he got Kali in in, in a merge with the tanks on, with the gun, and make sure that Kali hit the ground and the blue is victorious so far with two airframes. So, went very fast. Um, unfortunately, I'm doing this alone tonight. I have no co-commentator. It's quite uh, difficult. But nobody is is uh, assisting. So, things happening very fast. Um, there were merged everywhere. Um, and uh, this way, we can't really capture all of that. But what I can do here is, while these guys are flying back, we can just move to the tack view and then I can play back a little bit here. This is a good thing uh, when you have the tack view advanced license and you can simply play back everything and take a look at everything in the speed that you want so we go in and we just do replay while the blue side is getting back home to collect the landing points okay good so i think it is a better zoom view we just play a little bit forward here the first er's we're getting fired no threat you can also increase the speed a little bit and we see here monger doing a perfect job evading those missiles. You can see that here. The R-27s on him. The evasive maneuver in the last minute. Missile cannot follow. For me, he was the hero of the match. With the notches and the evasive maneuver. Very well done. And here fires on the enemy go into the notch or defensive again goes in defensive does a half a split s and pulls the missile into the ground one missile after another here roto makes also to not notch this missile so these guys are doing this very well to just pull all those missiles either into the ground or notch them simply um We have still all the aircraft in the air. So let's see if we can get the first kill. Here there is a situation with Rich, which is engaged here with two blue aircrafts. Um, difficult. Both the blue aircrafts turn hot. The thing is they are fast enough uh not fast enough sorry um they're very slow um when you fire a missile from that altitude from this low uh with no energy um it's not going to be a harm um on the contrary rich is fast is 1.3 mark fires a missile and see how fast this missile go um and this way he can also turn away and use the speed and um, be safe. So that was a situation that PTF could actually use to take uh, one of the red sides down. But Rich is a very, very expert and very skilled pilot. 
he just mastered the situation and just made to just get out of that situation safe and sound here again jack tries to just pull down the airplane to just pull this missile this 120 into the ground with him uh here decide to just stay high and just pull some g's you see here 6g something to just take this energy away from that missile so the missile is trash okay so still six reds in the sky and six blues in the sky so we haven't lost anyone um okay we have still a little bit till landing uh but because of that i got to pause here this is the good thing with the tag view i can pause it and i can go back to dcs and take predator was losing the altitude in order to land and then we have also dark star also in f16 very high and the new thing after the um last update is that you can see the altitude of the aircrafts on the map this is new so it is 58,000 high and we have here 4,000 high so dark star is too high from my perspective but you're probably gonna lose altitude very quickly in order to land let's focus on predator extend the air brakes 320 knots fast banking 65 degrees to right 75% RPM speed 220 the gears go down landing gears are out extended okay it's a bit nasty uh, the lights on the runway are a big help here in that weather it is not easy to land it is not easy to land in the dark and rainy situation um, and you need to land on the right airfield this is also quite important Okay. Keeps the nose up till the speed is controlled. Well done. So let's see what Dark Star doing. Okay, Dark Star is now in a quite acceptable altitude. You see Rodo here on the runway. Um, already i don't know if you have respawn or already landed i thought there are only two aircrafts coming home but we can see it on attack view later on okay now we're watching dark star okay that was a very very aggressive maneuver it get optical contact with the runway We're getting visuals seeing things and goes around to come back so let's change the view the alta four is not working when you're maneuvering that fast Or that quick okay he sees the lights on the runway but he's not in the right direction he needs to be I hope he's not going to land 
and goes around. Yeah, this is what he does. He needs to go around. He needs to just come aligned to the runway to have a safe landing. As I said, very hard. In that weather, you don't see the runway. The runway is gray. Everywhere else is gray. Um, so you need to make sure that the good visual contact with the runway and then you can um, go around, align yourself and then come back and do a proper landing. In between he has just pulled the langer up, need to bring the gears down and is 220 knots too fast for me if the air brakes help it's going to be a very long landing 180 170 170 knots 165 knots and touchdown well done he made it nose up and pull the nose down Brakes gonna help here. And then at some point of time you need to just engage the nose wheel steering to make sure that you're not hitting your comrades on the side of the runway. Oof. It was a tough round. It was a tough round and but we're not done. We have still one round to come and I can tell you this is around the ATO2 is going to be flown in this round. ATO2 is as far as I know, let me check exactly. ATO2 happens on Persian Gulf map between Qesh Island and Al Ain in United Arab Emirates. It's going to be daytime. It's going to be good weather. And now we are restarting the server to make sure that we can change the mission and we can get the clean tack view. So let's get back to the tack view here. And just continue where we just stopped. So, good thing is the server is gonna get stopped. Server is gonna get restarted, but we can continue seeing what happens on the battlefield. Here we have one threat from Roto on Technet. I'm gonna call him, um, but he's not going anywhere. He's safe. The missile has no joy juice. But this way, this is what I said. Look at Monger, how he is notching and dodging and evading missiles one after another. Look at this. This is unbelievable. From that close distance, with that, I believe, ET, which goes for the countermeasures. Look at that here. This ET, the infrared seeking, goes easily for the flares. Very well done. The next one, coming out of the rail. This G, which Monger has pulled here, saved his life. Look at that. Look at that. And the missile had no time to follow. First one went for the countermeasure. The second one, look at that. From so that close distance, did nothing. And the archer, going nowhere. Kali coming with the next Art 73. And this one is probably going to hit. Why? Because. Here, Munger stopped dropping flares. 
Well done. Here, one kill for, for the red side. But Munger did a very, very good job here. So let's see if... What is the situation? One, two, three, four, five on blue side. And five on the red side. So who's going to be next? Let us catch the next kill. Here, we have a kill. Falcon fires 120 on break shot break shot is dropping countermeasures break shot is slow trying to speeding up he's under one mock and this missile reaches out and touches him with two mock of speed 4v4 we also have lost someone on the blue side this ER is coming off the rail, going to Darkstar, but is not going anywhere because we know that Darkstar just survived this round. So we lost Rich here. He's fast enough, uh, but I think what he wanted to do you just were focused on dark star who's following dark star now he sees on his sa that predator is getting hot and it's going to be a threat he changes the target and decides for predator uh, predator fires first predator is round about 0.9 mach fast which is faster but the advantage is rich is very high this missile has more kinetic energy when it reaches out the other missile needs to go into the thick air and also not tracking for whatever reason it probably goes for the for the countermeasure Let's take a look here it goes simply either it get notched which is not a notch here what I see or goes here at this moment here probably here has got notched at this moment and that didn't track anymore yeah exactly here with the second countermeasure dropped here Ridiculous. Everything is going fast again. We are missing. Okay. Now the server is stopped. So the attack view is also not available. Uh, but... I think we just saw what we could. Um, let's get back to a short break. I just leave you with the Lion and the Sun video for a couple of seconds. And then uh, we're going to be back after a short break. Uh, get a drink, get a coffee, get whatever you like, and don't go anywhere. We're going to be back in five minutes with the second round on the Persian Gulf map between 51st and PTF.
Alpha Bravo from 207. 13 miles. Box one, box one. Oh, Jesus. Welcome back to the second round of Aces 22 episode 2 match between 51st and PTF. So, what's going to change in the second round? You know, you fly two different ATOs most of the time. Sometimes teams decide accidentally or by chance or whatever for the same uh, mission or same ATO. Um, in the, in the match, so we see the same air task order in both rounds. Uh, it happens. It happens, I think, two times uh, during this tournament. Uh, this time we have two different ATOs. So we saw the ATO 4, rainy, Caucasus, bad weather, 6v6, air to air, and now... We have here Persian Gulf map. Uh, we have Air Task Order 2, which is then a different scenario. In this scenario, the blue side is going to fly four air to air aircrafts, I mean, four aircrafts with air to air mission, and two aircrafts with air to ground mission, means that the air to ground airframes are forced to take only air to ground weapons certain kind of uh, air to ground weapons and also air to air airframes have the duty or task to cover them to do their job which is hitting the ground targets and the red side is actually here uh, the aggressors uh, need to just make sure that uh, the targets are not getting hit or the other sense they need to defend those at the ground's target so actually the blue sides are the aggressors okay the colors doesn't match in that sense as I said we have Persian Gulf uh, we have here uh, Al Ain International Airport in the United Arab Emirates and we're gonna fly um, along the uh, Emirates um, between Sharjah and Ras Al Khaimah, and we're gonna cross uh, the Hormuz Strait, and we're gonna meet somewhere here. I think no, we're not kind of going to fly. So this this guy is the blue guy is not flying across the Hormuz. Straight, straight of almost. Sorry, I just um, told you bullshit. So the bullseye is somewhere between Ras Al Khaimah and Sharjah International. So the red guys, 
they take off from Kresh Island in Persian Gulf, close to Strait of Hormuz, and then need to cross uh, Persian Gulf, um, fly over the water, and then meet those guys here around the bullseye. So we'll see if they're taking advantage of the terrain here uh, around Khasab, um, which are here quite high mountains close to Ras al Khaimah, or they decide to just engage over the water. We will see that uh, this time the fifty one guys are blue and uh, they just need to go here straight to the bullseye and then you see here these two targets I can show you here on the grounds uh, these hundred fifty two millimeter whatever um, which are in the middle of the desert alone. Um, are the targets they need to heat those targets with their uh, bombs and then get back home safe so this is the mission you need to get those target the difficulty here is as you see when you get close to those targets uh, the terrain is a little bit uh, misleading so there are lots of dots and points here the difficulty is to just find those target hit those target when you're um, using GPU bombs and then um, get back home safe. So this is quite difficult. Uh, we're gonna see how they gonna handle that, but just because we don't wanna miss anything and we want to take on uh, the loadouts, we're gonna go back to Al Ain and we're gonna take those blue aircrafts to see how they gonna decide for the load out so we have five flankers here um i'm missing a sixth one probably hasn't joined the server yet let's see if you have any changes on the red side or because it is allowed to just uh change the airframes between the two rounds it's a little bit different some tournaments that you stick to the airframe that you have just chosen for the first round but as soon as, as long as the ATOs are different um, so it is also a load to take different airframes between the two rounds which makes also sense so here we have a JF-17 F-18 two F-16s uh, one JF-17 on the runway and we have also here two F-18s already. So I don't think that much has changed with regards to the airframes. Uh, let's see who is gonna fly and who is gonna be reserved. Uh, the teams tend to have reserves, one or two, ready on the runway or on the ramp, uh, just in case somebody disconnects gets time out and everything uh, so they can jump in very quickly um, so they are not in a disadvantage of being underpowered so we see last minute which airframe is going to take off and which one is reserved and going to disconnect from server The Persian Gulf map is for me the underdeveloped one. Um, there are lots of stuff that you can do with Persian Gulf, which is not implemented yet. I hope it comes. Um, especially a lot of conflicts has happened here um, in this region uh, where we can build some cool missions uh, based on them. Uh, what is not developed here, as you see here, northwest part of Persian Gulf is not developed, so you don't have the key cities here, you don't have the uh, the Kuwait and Iraq here. If you have a couple of uh, Iraqi airfields here, you could build up some scenarios of the uh, Gulf Wars here, for example. What is also very disappointing is we don't have Isfahan 
airbase here, which is one of the most uh, important airbases in Iran, uh, just because it is the main base for the Tomcat in Iran. So the the tactical um, Tomcat squadrons are out there. It's actually the biggest um, Air Force base um, in Iran. So we don't have Isfahan here. And also we don't have uh, Boucher, which is also the Phantom F4 base of um, Iranian Air Force. Um, so it's, it's missing. We have we have some some less important uh, bases here, just like like Lar, but we don't have Boucher, which is uh, it's a pity, I would say. And uh, we haven't we have no development on the Iraqi and, and uh, Kuwaiti side. Maybe it comes. It would be nice if you could actually connect the Persian Gulf and um, Syria map together, so you could you could build. A lot of nice scenarios, just like H3 um, um, mission and, and things like this. But yeah, so back to the match and back to Al Ain International. See how the airframes are doing. 51 is taxing. This is the squad that we're going to watch this time. Just because these guys are flying blue and they are going to have the formation takeoff. I hope that they are in better luck than PTF in the first round. Um, the takeoff was not the best that we have seen. We need to just um, consult the Airbus and also watch attack views um, to see if we had the valid formation takeoff. Um, I promise to just check on the rules and see uh, what is the dimension of the bubble. Um, so let me check on that quickly if I can f find something very quickly. Up, 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 up. You have everything. Okay, back back to uh, the armament. As I said, M9X is banned. As I said, air to ground, tar uh, let's say, weapons. Uh, the usage of air to ground weapons in an air to air engagement, like the last ATO, is prohibited. So you cannot take any towels with you, for example, and so on. And um, ECM, so the electronic countermeasure is um, also permitted, uh, except for F-14. But I was looking for the bubble size. Okay. There is no information, as far as I can see, in the rules around the size of the bubble. Uh, interesting that we don't have it. But in average, the bubble is about 20 nautical mile of radius, between 15 and 20 mile, uh, nautical miles of radius. So big enough, and it's not shrinking, just like some other. Tournaments. Good, OK, we have here. Still. The flankers on the taxiway. They're still not on the runway, they're waiting. Uh, but both teams are ready, so we can give them a go. Go, go, go! Let's take the first flankers and watch them doing...
The first takeoff. Not from the airfield. The air taking off from the taxiway. Nothing is mentioned in the rules. So it is permitted. Beautiful. Beautiful formation takeoff. So close to each other. So synchronized. Very well done. I don't want to miss the second one. I don't want to miss it. So let's grab them. And go for the F3. View. Beautiful. No afterburner. Very smooth. Beautiful. Unbelievable. Really enjoyed that. So we have all of them joining up in a very tight and close formation. While they're joining up, we just move to the other side and see how the defenders are doing. These guys are going high, try to gain altitude. They're already on round about 35 angels. Let me bring down a little bit of outside world sound. So these guys are flying high. We can see it also on the map. You see here in the new version um, of DCS, you can see also the altitudes here. You can also see the names. I can activate the labels. So Falcon is flying actually water level, very low, uh, probably to stay away from the opponent radars. Uh, because everybody else is flying high, everybody else is flying about 30,000 feet and higher. Um, they are getting closer to each other, so it's very difficult to just find someone who is flying very low once you have just set your radar to beam um, higher at a certain level. Um, so probably this is what uh, they're going for, to just have the surprise effect. Okay. We see the flankers are tending to go to the right side. Um, this is what I assume. They're trying to go into the terrain, so a little bit higher uh, levels here, rather than fighting in the plain area between Sharjah and Rasulfema, which is quite plain. So here on the right side, on Alongside Fujaira, um, up to uh, Hasab, you have quite high terrain. And this is probably what Flanker likes and 51st is trying to take advantage of. Okay, here on the other side, so Falcon has just started as the first one, I think, but um, is a little bit behind because he's low. Uh, the density of the air is higher than he cannot go very fast. If he goes fast, then he needs a lot of fuel. So he's flying only 588 nautical miles of speed. And uh, miles, uh, sorry, uh, knots of speed, and uh, therefore Dark Star up there with 900 something is um, superior to that and just took him over. So he's leading with his F 16. 
um, quite high for me 40 angels very high he has four sidewinders only interesting let me take a look at the armament before I do something wrong see what what it is so the ATO2 F16 F18 and F15 so NATO aircraft so far uh, are allowed to take two Fox trees of one M 120C and two M9s on the blue side but we have the red side here so F16 F18 F14 so all the NATO aircrafts actually are allowed to take four M9 so four heat seekers tanks countermeasures and fuel as much as they want this way the red side is limited to infrared missiles the JF-17s can take four PL-5s with them and if they have any Sukhois on anything they, they can take four archers with them on the contrary the blue side they can take two Fox 3 missiles so semi-active radar missiles and two infrareds and if they have flankers they're going to be limited to two R27ER or R27ET or R77 and limited to two R70 so two infrareds and two R27s uh, either ER or ET or R77 so this is why we see that loadout okay as I said the blue has just pulled the engagement into the trains but they're still high uh, I think with that they try to just expose themselves to the enemy because they know that the the bandits have only infrared missiles so they're not going to fly from 10 nautical miles they're gonna, not going to fly from 5 nautical miles they're going to get close they need to get to, into the 2 nautical miles head on distance so they are safe in the high altitude but they're going into the ground so we pick this missile the first R 27 ER on the red side which is not tracking so dark star is lucky and is safe you see the blue side is pulling the red side the predator into the mountains and here is gonna be probably a easy target for Kali who is on him dropping flare just in case that there is a threat that he hasn't seen but we just missed it I believe one two three four five yes we missed here uh, one of the red side we can see it on uh, the tag view later on so Kali is so focused on Anaconda with his R27 that he just misses the one passing so he missed the monger he just missed the monger because he didn't see him let's take that the IR on him and it does, doesn't hit the IR just simply passed along Kali while he is still focused on his target countermeasures go out the missile doesn't hit we have a merger let's stay here wow somebody took Kali while he was focused on his target so he just lost the situational awareness and here on this side we have Roto alone against three blue aircraft so let's take this and go to the F5 And see what tech is doing here tech is firing on the f-18 and kill easy looks easy 
but it's not. So we have three versus two from the blue perspective. Here we have the M9 from Falcon on break shot. Let's see if it reaches out and touches him. He needs to flare here, but the IR has no juice because he's already cold and he's fast, so the IR has no chance. The second IR is also no chance here. So let's take this R73 on Anaconda. Anaconda flaring just like Savage and just think either hit the ground or hit another missile. So very difficult situation here for Falcon alone against everyone. While he is in the merge, there are other aircrafts here threatening him. So he has a very, very hard job against all those aircrafts. And he got hit. Blue has taken control of the battle area. And there are still three blue aircrafts remaining. I'm not sure if he had two aircrafts on the last round, but as far as the ATOs are different, the scenarios are different, then you can't uh, really compare them uh, with each other. The thing is here now, there is still a task to do, which is taking down... Oh, let me get them. Those old-fashioned artillery here close to the red smoke and for that we need to have air to ground munition so let's see if any of those sukhois are is capable of doing that break shot is winchester frosty is winchester And TechNet, I'm going to say TechNet for ease of pronunciation, is also Winchester. So the red side did a good job and just made to take down the blue aircrafts with the air to ground munitions. In that sense, they are not able to hit them. Um, what I think only is it is allowed to hit those ground target with the gun, if I'm not wrong. So probably these guys are going to go for the targets and hit them with a the gun, if I'm not wrong. Um, let me check. Um, bup, 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 bup. But they're not doing that. They're they're heading home. They're heading home. With that, they are going to lose points. They're not able to collect those points. So air to ground. They need to attack those target with the bombs. Destruction of every target brings 15 points and destruction means if they hit the target and make it damage of bigger than 50 percent so so 30 points are missing here just because there were no attack on the ground targets but there are points for killing the opponent aircrafts um so this is what they can take with uh, they made to just kill all those six aircrafts on the other side. And uh, for every kill, you get 10 points. And um, yeah, this is what um, the blue side could collect for sure. Um, here, yeah, we see here probably Frosty is going, as I assumed, for those ground targets. Let's see if he's successful. 
with the gunshot. It's difficult. Uh, these are not um, vehicles which you can just hit with your uh, cannons or with the guns and, and just um, cause big damages. And the other thing is that they are also um, shooting at you. So they are also defending themselves. Um, in, that in that case, uh, we don't have, I think, yeah, okay, we have machine guns here. So these machine guns are a threat for you. They're gonna, gonna fire on you when you get close to them. So when you start diving and go very close to use your gun, uh, then uh, they're gonna open fire on you and they may hit you. So it is safer to use bombs, your laser guided bombs and things like that. Um, but we'll see how Frosty is going to do this. So finger crossed. He needs to find them first. It is very difficult. The terrain is full of uh, full of dots, and he's doing a good job finding them. Um, going to the dive and try the guns. The first round out, okay, kind of hits. Okay, nice. One is hit. Let's see how big the damage is. Okay, the one disappeared from the map, so it is fully damaged. We're going to get the second one. See how it's going to be. Let's see if I can find Frosty somewhere. Um, it's coming from that side. Okay. Here, here we go. Frost is coming. See on top. Climb. You just climb to just be able to dive in 45 degrees of angle. And build up the distance. It's too high. Can't see him. So let's go on that view. Beautiful job. Valid. The damage. <laughs> Sorry. The damage is big enough. It disappeared from the map. Okay. So that was. 30 points, which we didn't want to miss. What I can expect here is a nice formation flying. Yeah. 151st, enjoy it. We don't see that on a daily basis. So at the end, there are the points that count. This is the duty of Airbus, or who is then responsible for controlling the tag view data file and see um, if the formation take off and everything was valid. Collect those points, uh, sorry, calculate those points, sum up, and then um, tell us how many points were uh, achieved here. Uh, at the end, it is not the single match which is deciding. It is uh, the whole group stage which matters. It means that you fly five matches in total, 10 ATOs. You collect those points, those points get uh, summed up and then at the end the, the teams with the highest points are um, going to make to the elimination round so every single match is important every single point is important but at the end with one match um, it's not going to be decided
Okay, Frost is probably speeding up uh, while these two are flying um, with the air brakes out. You're going to the cloud layer. So we're gonna probably lose some sight. I don't know if it is the new clouds we are seeing, just because uh, this mission was created with an earlier version. I don't know if the setting has changed. Uh, it is very difficult to fly in formation, in very close formation, and it is especially difficult when you get into the cloud layer. So beautiful. And I don't see any lights on. Uh, yeah, um, those are formation lights are on, so it makes it a bit easier, but nevertheless. So we are under the cloud layers, um, clear sky now from, from the point of view. Um, we will probably be able to see the runway very soon. Here on the left side, you see um, they're going to just fly over Al Ain and then break left for the landing. So let's enjoy that. Just pop up the volume a little bit, let you enjoy. and keep quiet. This is master class formation flight. I try to get the best view for you. So while we're enjoying, let's take a look at the upcoming matches. The next match is gonna be on November 5th. We have TFS-81 and Nemesis in one team versus 343KU. Um, TFS-81 and Nemesis have decided for the ATO-3. And um, 343 has decided for ATO-4 for the second round. This match is going to happen on November 5th at 1500 Zulu. The second match of next weekend is going to be on November 6th at 1800 Zulu between Night Owls with ATO-1 on PTF with ATO-5. So don't miss it. I hope that we get some um, stream on it. Um, I can't imagine to take one of them when I'm not flying myself uh, on November 5th. So I'll probably could stream and bring it to you on November 6th between Night Owls and PTF. Um, gonna post in the stream channel of ACES Tournament. Uh, you can join and um, get notified once um, the stream schedule is published. And then when you subscribe also to my channel and also to uh, Plasma uh, channel, we are two guys who are streaming the ACES tournament for you. So when you subscribe these two channels, you make sure that um, you're gonna get notified when the next stream is up. So here we have a little bit of separation here. Um, Technet and Brickshot just wait for the Frosty to come. 
they're going to go into the pattern. Let's take break shot. is more probable to land as the first. Um, I hope I see a formation landing also here. Because they do it so well. Well, about organizer. So the organizer of the Aces 22 is PTF and Squad Run. They have uh, they are doing this for the third time. So I think there was one Aces in 21, and this is the second Aces in 22. So uh, PTF and Squad Run is the organizer. Um, if you're interested in taking part, just sign up uh, for the next tournament you go to the um, eagle dynamics uh, forum uh, there is a special room for the tournaments when you go to the tournament forums uh, the posts uh, are going to be there as soon as the tournament is announced and you have the chance to sign up there and participate in that you may also add yourself to uh, the aces discord channel um don't know if I can take a get a link for you guys quickly. Um, it should be somewhere in the documents. Just let me check to just guide you there. Okay, this is Discord. Very quickly, I'm going to the tournaments page. And we have aces. There should be a link somewhere here. Here we go. So this is the link. I can put it in the chat if you're interested. You can join that this on Discord and then be part of it. If you don't play DCS, um, I can recommend it. If you're into flying, if you're into competitive or any kind of um, flight adventure, if you're a friend of Milsim, this is the right thing for you. Uh, this is the most sophisticated um, flight simulator in the military area that you can have. Um, fast jets with um, fast uh, capabilities you can choose out of uh, a large spectrum a number of um, jet and also uh, cold war and um, warbird spectrum um, so the the number of the airframes are also growing there are uh, more and more airframes coming into dcs uh, we are waiting for f4 phantom this year probably next year or beyond we're gonna have the eurofighter very soon mb339 is um, going to be um, introduced to dcs so um, there are lots of third-party developers and also the Eagle Dynamics, the creator of uh, DCS, uh, are developing um, new modules to add um, to that. But at the moment, there are F-18, F-16, F-14, uh, uh, these uh, NATO aircrafts, in addition to uh, Sukhoi MiG-29, uh, JF-17, and whatever you want um, to choose from. So very nice to just fly for fun. Uh, flying multiplayer missions, flying competitive. Um, so there is um, something for every taste. Um, so I can really recommend it, but there is the risk of addiction. So be careful. So um, we have the three flankers. Uh, they brought them home. Um, the lights are going off on flankers. Uh, 
the canopies are going up and um, this is the signal that we are at the end of the match and we are at the end of the stream for tonight thanks again that you joined and watched and waited uh, for the 15 minutes delay tonight and um, we had a little bit of technical um, issues just like I couldn't um, unfortunately um, run the second instance of DCS uh, for you guys to um, give you a better immersion of, uh, of the match um, for whatever reason I couldn't um, join the um, and open the map uh, for you to just share with you on the second instance uh, but luckily we had the tech view we could enjoy the first rounds uh, debriefing while tech view um, for the second round I'll leave it for now I think um, we just extended or exceeded the um, plan time for this stream just because the distance uh, was somehow very long in the first round and also the whole landings takes time so we don't want to extend this um, thank you again don't forget to subscribe see you in the virtual skies next time and uh, enjoy the video have a good time and stay safe Contact the tower at 6 DME at 3000. 